Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos. This is News at 10. Well, Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob today announced the list of his results-oriented cabinet lineup involving 31 ministers, including four senior ministers, who, as a management team, will work together with the people. Now, opting not to hold a portfolio himself and without naming a deputy prime minister, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri retained many of the full ministers who served under his predecessor, Tansri Mohyeddin Yassin, and also 38 deputy ministers. Kabinet ini merupakan satu formulasi semula berdasarkan situasi semasa demi mengekalkan kestabilan dan meletakkan kepentingan serta keselamatan keluarga Malaysia melebihi daripada segala-galanya. Oleh itu, kerajaan akan memperkasakan agenda Nasional Malaysia Sihat ataupun ANMS dalam mendidik keluarga Malaysia untuk hidup bersama virus ini. Kita perlu terus mengawal segala risiko COVID-19 dan mengamalkan norma baru dalam kehidupan seharian. Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri added that the cabinet has to work fast and in unison to free Malaysia from the threats of the COVID-19 pandemic, economic uncertainty and political turmoil. Well, following is the list of ministers and deputy ministers announced by Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob today. Well, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri also said the new cabinet lineup announced today needs to be results oriented based on three principles, namely being sensitive to current needs, responsible and trustworthy, and restoring public confidence. Now, the Prime Minister said he would ensure that the cabinet is committed to achieving the national agenda through cross party cooperation to drive economic recovery for the well being of the people. 
Dutchess Reese Malsabri also pledged to ensure that the new lineup would give emphasis on high performance, work culture, and that each ministry has to have short and long term plans, achieve all the set targets, and prove their early achievements in the first 100 days. Barisan Kabinet ini dipilih daripada kombinasi mereka yang berpengalaman. Diyakini mampu membantu negara memulihkan ekonomi dengan menyokong usahawan, memudah cara perniagaan dan merancakkan semula aktiviti ekonomi serta meningkatkan keyakinan pelabur. The Premier also noted that the new cabinet is a management team that will work with the people by using a new approach that is more open and upholding the aspiration of the Malaysian family through more efficient service and information delivery. Acknowledging that the country is currently under a difficult situation due to COVID-19, economic uncertainty and unstable political landscape, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said the mission towards recovery need the cabinet to strive and work closely with the people with the support from all civil servants. Datu Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali, who retained his portfolio as Senior Minister and Minister of International Trade and Industry, is committed to ensuring the country's economy continues to progress at a sustainable growth and recovery for the sake of the Malaysian family. In his post on Twitter, Datu Sri Azmin thanked Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob on the latter's trust in him to continue leading the ministry while he also pledged to continue his mission to improve the economy. Newly minted Senior Defence Minister Datu Sri Hishamuddin Tun Hussein has also pledged to shoulder the responsibility to the best of his ability. Elsewhere, Datu Sri Fadila Yusuf said the government's focus now is to ensure political stability, address the COVID-19 pandemic and the country's economic recovery for the sake of economic survival and the lives of the people. The minister also called on all political parties to play their respective roles in helping the country through these trying times. Meanwhile, in a Facebook post today, Dato Dr. Radzi Jilin expressed his commitment to strengthen the Education Ministry's efforts as a high-performing ministry following the latest cabinet lineup announcement. He said the ministry will continue its emphasis on the three main concepts in the ministry, namely quality, productivity and modernization as a high-performing ministry. New Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa also thanked Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakov for selecting him today. Well, he said he was committed to leading the ministry, which he said was important in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and economic recovery, as well as strengthening the digital sector for the benefit of the people. In his maiden statement with the ministry's letterhead, Tan Sri Anwar also hoped to receive full cooperation from the officers and leadership of KKMM and its agencies. The previous minister during the Perikatan national government was Dato Saifuddin Abdullah, who has returned to his post during the Perikatan national era as the foreign minister. Well, Malaysia recorded 22,070 new COVID-19 cases today. And Health Director General Tantri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah in a series of tweets said this brings the cumulative number of COVID-19 infections in the country to 1,662,913 cases. In the same 24-hour period, he said there were 339 fatalities bringing the death toll to 15,550. Now, there were also 21,877 recoveries, which means 1,381,668 have recovered from the disease nationwide. There are still 982 patients in intensive care units with 470 requiring ventilation support. And Tansri Dr. Noor Hisham added that Selangor had the most new cases with 5,920 infections, followed by Sabah with 3,010 and Sarawak with 2,224. Labuan was the only locality to record single-digit figures with eight new COVID-19 cases today. But Tansri Dr. Noor Hisham said that there were also 28 new clusters detected in the last 24 hours, with nine of them in Sarawak, five in Kelantan, four each in Selangor and Pulau Pinang, three in Pahang, two in Johor, and one cluster in Trungganu.
The Malaysian Armed Forces, the ATM, welcomes corporate and private sector participation in Garobo Rezeki Food Aid program to help its 15,000 B-40 veteran military families get through the COVID-19 pandemic. While speaking to reporters at a food aid handing over ceremony, its commander, General Tan Sri Afendi Buang, said there are at least 15,000 veterans from the force who fall under the low-income bracket and need assistance in the form of food and financial aid. Kita sentiasa mencari jalan dan menyuruh kepada badan-badan bukan kerajaan dan seperti pendema kita ini Tan Sri Lee kan untuk sentiasa memberi sumbangan memang kita perlukan ya banyak kita lihat di luar sana bahawa kesan-kesan ataupun impak-impak yang negatif terhadap uh, kelangsungan hidup uh, terutamanya uh, golongan yang B40 ini amat uh, ketara. He said this to reporters after accepting 10,000 food aid boxes from the founder of Mines Resort in Country Heights holding Tan Sri Lee Kim Yew at the Palace of Golden Horses today. According to Tan Sri Effendi, there are about 270,000 Army veterans registered with the Retired Veteran Armed Forces Association in the country. Investigations on the shooting of four Royal Malaysian Air Force personnel at the RMEF camp in Kota Samarahan, Sarawak recently is still ongoing and the Malaysian Armed Forces, the ATM, are awaiting for a full report from the police. Armed Forces Chief General Tan Sri Effendi Buang, however, said the ATM cannot comment further at this time until the investigation paper is completed. Perkara ini masih lagi dalam uh, sesuatu polis kan. So we will not say anything yet lah until the investigation is over. On 13th August, a member of the RMAF shot and killed three of his colleagues before turning the gun on himself at the RMAF 330 Squadron Handout Control Room. Initial investigations found that the suspect had seized a firearm at the guardhouse of the base and shot one of his colleagues who was trying to calm him down. And after that, the suspect entered the restroom and shot another person on the chest. The suspect then shot a third person in the back before shooting and killing himself. Bank net second quarter profit at over 700 million ringgit. Stay with us. Malaysia's economic recovery momentum may be derailed by the record-breaking daily new COVID-19 cases, dimming prospects for stronger performance in the third quarter despite the ongoing vaccine rollout. Now, the Department of Statistics, or DOSM, has warned that given the scenario, the leading index, or LI, posted a slower annual growth of 0.5% in June 2021. However, the LI declined 2.8% month on month. Now, as such, Chief Statistician Dato Sri Dr. Mohamed Uzi Mahidin in a statement today said a challenging economic outlook is forecast for Malaysia in the months ahead. And accordingly, he said Bank of Malaysia, or BNM, has revised its full year gross domestic product or GDP growth forecast for Malaysia to between 3 and 4 percent from the previous estimate of between 6 and 7.5 percent for 2021. Now, Dato Sri Mohamed Uzir noted that the United States, the United Kingdom, China, Taiwan, South Korea, and ASEAN have shown signs of economic expansion. And as for Malaysia, the GDP surged to 16.1% in the second quarter after four consecutive quarters of contraction attributed to low base effects while on the supply side it was supported mainly by the continuous growth in the manufacturing sector which grew by 26.6% and the rebound in the services sector at 13.4% compared to a decline of 2.3% in the preceding quarter. Nevertheless, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter seasonal adjustment the GDP contracted 2% from a growth of 2.7% in the preceding quarter. 
RHB Bank Burhan posted a net profit of 701.34 million ringgit for the second quarter ended 30th June 2021 on a higher total income and lower operating expenses, an increase by 75% compared to 400.77 million ringgit for the same period a year ago. Now, it is noted that last year the quarter was impacted by a net modification loss impact where revenue was 2.93 billion ringgit, which was down from 3.26 billion ringgit post Posted previously. Now, for the first half of 2021, net profit stood at 1.35 billion ringgit versus 971.65 million ringgit in 2020, while revenue slipped to 5.83 billion ringgit from 6.47 billion ringgit previously. RHB said the group's financial performance for the first half of the year demonstrates the resilience to record growth and its fundamental strengths, including the bank's ability to sustain strong capital and liquidity positions despite the challenging operating environment. It has declared an interim dividend of 15 cents per share, equivalent to a payout ratio of 45.1%. The interim dividend consists of cash payout of 5 cents per share and electable portion under dividend reinvestment plan of 10 cent per share. Now, the bank's total assets for the group increased by 4.1% to 282.3 billion ringgit as at 30th June 2021 from December last year, while net assets per share was 6 ringgit 86 cent with shareholders equity at 27.5 billion ringgit as at 30th June 2021. Exiata Group Burhard is hopeful that the merger exercise between Selcom Exiata Burhard and Telenor Group's DG.com Burhard would be completed by the first quarter of 2022. The president and group chief executive officer Dato Izadin Idris said the group had made the submission to the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission MCMC last month for the regulator to approve the exercise. In a virtual media briefing today, Dato Izadi noted that the group has appointed consultants to undertake the economic analysis of the merger and the impact it had on the market and the industry. Well, it said once the merger is completed, there will be a period of integration that creates some challenges in maintaining the network, quality of service and customers on both sides between DG and Cellcom. To recap, Axiata and Telenor have signed the transaction agreements for the proposed merger referred to as Mergeko on 21st June. Now, the signing of the agreement signified a confirmation of their intent to establish a commercially stronger and more resilient digital converged service provider to drive Malaysia's digital ambitions. Well, that concludes this evening's News at 10. In our top story, most senior figures retained in new cabinet lineup. Well, folks, join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Mohammed Amin Carlos. Stay tuned to Saloran Brita RTM and have a pleasant evening.